Hi everyone, my name's Paul Cox, based in Los Angeles. This is my 1979 Kenworth K100 Aerodyne 108-inch cab, VIT interior. Uh, just at the end of uh, a th about a three, three and a half year restoration right now. And uh, all the sheet metal work is done, the cab's been rebuilt, uh, frame's been done, motor and transmission, rear ends, everything been rebuilt. And in fact, it is ready for paint, and it leaves tomorrow for the paint booth. So I just thought I'd uh, run around and show you a few highlights. You don't get to see them really this, uh, this strip down. Uh, the cab was really broken when I got it. Um, hydraulic cylinder failure, floors were cracked, rear panel, everything. So I uh, ended up getting a, a tunnel from another parts truck and refoaming it. And uh, made a few structural alterations as well. And, uh, but basically all new floors, new side skins, uh, new rear panel, NOS headlight sections, as many NOS parts as I could get. New steering columns, steering box, all new springs, brake chambers, etc. It's got the air steer on it, that's the cylinder there for that. But everything's uh, been apart and uh, yep, here it is uh, ready to go out the door for paint. So everything cleaned up. And uh, ready to go. It's got the 8V92 Detroit diesel. It's got the 15 speed fuller. And uh, the aluminum frame, which actually had a couple of minor cracks in it, one of which ended up in me having to remove the engine just to be able to work on the inside of the crack, just purely because the Detroit is so wide. That's, uh, that's the frame pretty much there. But everything's been apart, all new spring pins, uh, just everything, yeah. It was pretty trash, the truck was ready to be scrapped. But uh, all the floor work, everything's, everything's nice. So let me show you around the other side, then I'll lower the cab and uh, have a show you inside there. Well, you know what, let's do this right now. So one of the structural improvements is actually this rail here, which they added in later years and called it the severe duty kit, but to be honest, every truck needed it. The cab started getting longer and longer and they didn't really change the structure, so they got weak. Um, but this is a quarter inch angle and it runs right from the very back, ties into the, the very back brace all the way down. I extended the floor braces here so they tie into that and they come all the way to the front here and made this extra little bracket hang on, this one here uh, just to tie it right into the front just for, for extra strength okay, that's that and over on this side, yep, yeah, same deal love these castings apparently uh, an engineer who previously worked in aerospace for Boeing came to Kenworth I believe in the very early 50s and said, you boys need to start using aluminum. So these castings are just amazing. Look at the size of that. And it's frame end, front suspension, cab mount, just all multi-purpose. OK, battery box. Uh, this is a complete restoration. Um, it's, not a, it's not a custom job at all. What I've tried to do is just it, it's going to be like the day it left the factory, pretty much. Um, uh, obviously, the, the few improvements. But, uh, yeah, no, uh, sorry, boys, no 10-inch uh, pipes on, the, on this bad boy. So let me just prop up the uh, cab safety here and bring, bring the cylinder down, the cab down, there we go. Put that bad boy right down. Uh, right now it's got the manual uh, pump on it here, but uh, I will be uh, will be adding the air the air pump to it once uh, once it's painted. So the plan is it goes to paint. Uh, we prep and prime the inside of the cab, paint it black, uh, prep and prime the outside of the cab, uh, and prep the frame. Uh, it's going to be the Salem paint job. It's going to be metallic silver, medium metallic blue with the with the gold pinstripe and the black stripe and uh, there we go, this is just a temporary cab mount right now this thing here, I've, got, I've rebuilt the original air ride on it and uh, that won't be going on until uh, until it's all painted um, so yeah, paint the inside of the cab, outside of the cab and then um, then put all the exhaust 
verticals on, all the air intake and all that stuff on the back. And then just like the factory, shoot the, uh, there we go, down. And uh, shoot the entire, shoot the entire frame in, uh, in one go. Um, as you can see, the, the only lines left on it are actually the hydraulic lines for the cab tilt. Everything else is, uh, is off of it. Uh, I know originally from the factory everything was on it and got covered in paint, but with having to tear the motor out, it just seemed, it just seemed better to, to paint it with the motor out and all the lines off just because that Detroit is so wide. You just can't get into the frame rails properly. So, uh, but here is... That's the view of the cab there. So as I say, the roof actually, we removed the roof completely and uh, just done a, a, lot of, a lot of work getting all the gaps real nice on the doors, all the sleeper doors, etc. And uh, just pop open the door here, reach inside for you. Oh, gotta love that. All new hinges and just uh, just everything in the, in the right place. Um, it's, it's tricky with these trucks, they do bend around a lot. But uh, a lot of NOS parts, thanks to eBay door jams here, and a friend of mine, Nasir, who uh, has a gold mine of parts. I think I got most of them. Um, but um, yeah, this door frame here is NOS. The door, uh, the door jam here itself was NOS. Uh, yeah, but uh, as many many new parts as uh, as we can find. But up inside, let me just grab the light here. So let me just pull this out the way here. So a typical Aerodyne interior, 108 inch cab, upper bunk, etc. Um, the one huge improvement I made here, the, this uh, steel section here that catches the front panel to the tunnel to the floor, it normally finishes here. It's just a little short piece that comes here. So I added to it this huge 8 inch piece all the way so it captures the entire shifter opening and all these rivets capture right into the right into the floor underneath there so uh, uh, certainly a lot stronger than, uh, than it originally was but um, yeah let's see what else we got in here uh, originally it was just polystyrene and some foam on the roof this is all three quarter inch um, thermoshield uh, with um, double foil line jute because th the thermoshield and the jute actually fills up the, the, the distance really nicely uh, between the uh, the extrusions here, um, but uh, but when you've got everything in the right place and all the gaps nice, the doors just go, which is just great. They certainly never did, that's for sure. Uh, another little improvement I made here: the door closer, which always just rubs through the aluminum. Um, remade them in, in stainless, um, but also I mounted a block on the inside of the rail on the back side here that you don't really see. Um, it's kind of hidden. He carries it, and uh, so this rod actually glides on a bearing. So it's got the rubber stopper on it, and you obviously can, can set the uh, the limit to, to the, the maximum opening. But so now it just glides in a bearing right in the middle of that hole, which is uh, which is nice. So uh, that's uh, that's about it. I will just uh, come up here and take a quick look around inside. Can. Excuse the camera work, I'm on my own. So the dash has all been trial fitted and that's uh, being painted. Uh, being ready for paint right now. So, uh, oh, the other thing I did was uh, add this plate over the top of the tunnel as well. But it's all, as I say, everything is stock. The interior is VIT, it's going to be black. Um, I've had an embossing tool made for the Kenworth logo in the seats and the door panels, so it'll all uh, look original. And uh, that is the end of the guided tour of three and a half years worth of a lot of work. And there it is. So, uh, sorry for the long video, but. I don't know, you take a few photographs and that's kind of the end of it. And then it goes to paint and it all looks shiny and we all know what they look like when they're painted. So, here we go. Just a little run around it again. So, same deal on the passenger side, just with the rod, etc. I decided to paint it with the heater box out, paint it all separately, and then, uh, then assemble. 
but uh, um, let's see. Oh, the other improvement I made structurally inside here was to add this quarter inch. Well, it's actually three sixteenth plate. It's angled to fit in the corner, and then it goes right the way up to that floor section there, and it's all one piece. So that entire piece actually goes from right at the bottom of the floor all the way up to here captured by all these rivets and the reinforcement the horseshoe reinforcement which they added later in 79 this didn't have it originally but boy it needed it so yeah definitely uh, is a huge improvement that uh, any of you doing one of these if it's early you should think about putting that on especially with a 108 inch cap but uh, but all the gaps are real nice and it's just taken uh, taken a long old time but you know that's what happens when uh, you want to do things properly. Okay, well that is it. So thank you very much. And I will uh, do another video when, uh, when it's painted. How about that? Okay.